Hey everyone, today is Good Friday, and I'm excited that you have chosen to spend part of your Holy Week with us, even if it's a more somber occasion. My name is Sean, I'm the pastor here at Centralia UMC, and for this online-only worship experience, we're going to have video presentations and music, and then we're going to make our way through the traditional Stations of the Cross, which are recognized more formally in the Catholic Church. But for us, it's going to be an opportunity for us to reflect on what the journey of Jesus might have been like on this day. We'll have scripture references read and a time of prayer for each of these stations, and they'll tell a part of the story that make our way to the cross. But for now, let's prepare our hearts for worship. This might be a little bit of a different worship experience for you. So what we'll do is we'll read through the scripture passages um, dealing with this day, Good Friday. And we'll have a brief time of prayer that I'll lead. All of that will be on the screen. Especially for the time of prayer, I would encourage you to pray along with me. If you'd like to, you can pray along with me by saying with me the words that are on the screen. Or you can pray on your own. We'll have a quick breath in between scripture readings, and we'll also have images coming up um, dealing with each of these stations of the cross and passages of scripture. So I invite you to pray with me as we begin our journey to the cross with Jesus. Lord God, wherever we are, whenever we are together, We pray that you would be in our midst, that we would recognize the great lengths of which you went so that we might know how far love should go, that we might know what it means to sacrifice so others might know love. We thank you for your greatest gift of Jesus, whom we remember this day whom we hurt with on this day. As we keep an eye toward the resurrection, may we be impacted by the retelling of your story. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
the journey to the cross for Jesus, what we call Holy Week, began on Palm Sunday, where Jesus enters into, into Jerusalem triumphantly, victoriously. People are shouting his name in victory. But quickly, those shouts turn to crucify. Come Friday. And so Jesus moves from Palm Sunday to the garden before he's turned in. And that's where we begin our readings today. I'd invite you to soak in the reading of this story. And in between each section of reading, we'll have a prayer that I invite you from home, wherever you are, to pray alongside of me aloud, if you're comfortable. And if not, feel free to pray alongside of me in whatever way you need to in this moment. Jesus took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be grieved and agitated. Then he said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and stay awake with me. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed, My father, if it's possible, let this cup pass from me. Yet not what I want, but what you want. And then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, Oh, could you not stay awake with me just one hour? Lord, because of my sins and errors, you grieved and took the cup of suffering for me. Now help me to stay awake with you and walk with you in prayer. Immediately, while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, and with him there was a crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him and lead him away under guard. And so when he came, he went up to him at once and said, Rabbi, and kissed him. And then they laid hands on him and arrested him. Lord, am I like Judas when I claim to love you, but actually I do not like you when you seem weak? I have betrayed you, Lord. Forgive me and refresh my heart. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for testimony against Jesus to put him to death, but they found none. Again, the high priest asked him, Are you the Messiah, the Son of the Blessed One? And Jesus said, I am. You will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. And then the highest priest tore his clothes and said, Why do we still need witnesses? What is your decision? All of them condemned him as deserving of death. Jesus, sometimes I wonder if you really are the Lord of all. I repent my lack of faith, my misunderstanding, and my blame on you. Revive my soul in faith, O Christ. And now Peter was sitting outside the courtyard. A servant girl came to him and said, You also are with Jesus, the Galilean. But he denied it before all of them, saying, I don't know what you're talking about. When he went out to the porch, another servant girl saw him, and she said to the bystanders, This man was with Jesus of Nazareth. Again, he denied it with an oath. I do not know the man. After a little while, the bystanders came up and said to Peter, Certainly you are also one of them, for your accent betrays you. And then he began to curse, and he swore an oath, I do not know the man. At that moment, the cock crowed. And then Peter remembered what Jesus had said, Before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. Lord, how often I have denied you when you needed me most in times of hardship and challenges. Remind me of my escapism that avoids the way of the cross. Help me to turn around and boldly declare, Jesus is my Lord and my life. The Pilate now spoke to them again. Then what do you wish me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? And they shouted back, crucify him. Pilate asked them, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Crucify him! 
And so Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them. And after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Let's pray. How often, Lord, if I judge to you and others based on worldly voices, help me to hear and to follow your voice only in the Holy Spirit. Amen. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters and they gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him. And after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on his head and they put a reed in his right hand and knelt before him and mocked him saying, Hail, King of the Jews. And they spat on him and took the reed and struck him on the head. O Lord, do I really believe that you are my God of all? While I serve other gods, remove false gods from me and help me to honor you as my only king in all my life. The chief priest replied, we have no king but the emperor. And so they took Jesus and carrying the cross by himself, he went out to what is called the place of the skull, which in Hebrew is called Golgotha. O Christ, you took up the cross and carried it by yourself on the way of suffering for me. And now you want me to carry my own cross and follow you. So strengthen me to take up my cross and step after you. As Jesus was carrying his cross on the way, they compelled a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. Lord, even today, when you are tired of carrying the cross, I may be forced to take it for you. Then, empower me to carry the cross willingly beside you, and to consider that my honor for you. A great number of the people followed him, and among them were women who were beating their breasts and wailing for him. But Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves. And for your children. O Lord, you have been concerned about me dearly, even in the midst of your extreme pain. Forgive my self centered thought and being succumbed to my own issues. Now help me to grow in spirit so that I can care for others more with your spirit of compassion. When they came to the place that is called the skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots to divide his clothing, and the people stood by watching. But the leaders scoffed at him, saying, He saved others, let him save himself if he is the Messiah of God, his chosen one. And the soldiers also mocked him coming up and offering him sour wine and saying, if you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. Oh, Jesus, thanks for praying for me to be forgiven even when I did not know what I did wrong. Help me to become like you, to pray to forgive others who don't know what they did wrong, what they did to me. One of the criminals who were hanged there kept deriding him and saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed have been condemned justly, for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And he replied, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. Lord, how hard but blessed it is to recognize my own sins and errors. Inspire me to realize that and remember me in your paradise. Strengthen me to walk toward your kingdom and your grace. Meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, Here is your mother. 
And from that hour, the disciple took her into his own home. O Lord, you are our eternal Father, and we are your children. Thanks for connecting us to be one family in the Lord, even at the moment of your pain on the cross. Empower us to take care of one another as family members, especially when life is hard and we are alone. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Elohi, Elohi, lema sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard this, they said, listen, he is calling for Elijah. And someone ran, filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink, saying, wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. And then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. And now when the centurion who stood facing him saw that in, in this way, he breathed his last. He said, truly, this man was God's son. Oh, Jesus, at times I feel abandoned and fearful when I face cruelty and death in me and in others. Yet you already experienced suffering and death for me in my place and forgave all my sins and errors. Now I want to yield my whole life to God as you did to the point of death on the cross. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who was also a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be given to him. And so Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had honed in the rock. He then rolled a great stone to the door of the tomb and went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were there, sitting opposite in the tomb. O oh Lord, even when you seem to be dead, help me to stay close to you and to offer my best, my best love, my best honor to you, as your faithful disciples did. I'll never leave you and your body, the church. You know, the story of this day is God seeing us, seeing God's own creation in suffering and in hurt and in need and being moved to action. And so as we celebrate this day in whatever way, may we be moved to act and to respond, to see our Lord suffering and to respond in kind to see the suffering of the world around us and not just say, well, I hope that that gets better, but to actually do something. And there are a variety of ways that you can do that as part of our faith community. One of the ways that you can do that is by serving, by connecting in community, worshiping together. And one of the ways that you can do that is by giving. Giving to a church community makes a difference in many ways. It helps us to serve the community around us, to fill bellies that much need it, to clothe bodies that need it, and to fill one another up in community and spiritually, that the world might be transformed by whatever way we are faithful disciples here at CUMC. There are a variety of ways that you can give. You can do that through our website, you can give by mail, by text, whatever works best for you, all those ways are on the screen. And I would like for us to share a time of prayer together for our offering. Lord God, you gave us all you had in Jesus. That is the way of love. If we are to become love, then we will respond the same way. So let us give of all we have to sacrifice that others might know you and might know love. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey, I would love to invite you to Easter uh, this Sunday, or this day where we remember Good Friday and the death of Jesus. We also remember that this is not the end of the story. And we would love to celebrate the end of the story with you. 
Um, this Sunday, Easter Sunday at 10 a.m. here at CUMC, you can engage with us in person by coming and being a part of all the amazing festivities happening here. And you can also join us for worship online that will be live streamed that day as well. We would love to see you. Bye-bye.